Welcome, and thank you for listening to Trekker Talk, a fan podcast devoted to the adventures of 23rd century bounty hunter Mercy St. Clair from the pages of Trekker by writer and artist Ron Randall. I'm Ruth. And I'm Darren, and this is a fan podcast. We're not affiliated with Ron Randall, and the opinions expressed are just ours. We do this podcast simply because we enjoy reading and talking about Trekker and any of Ron Randall's other comics. Please consider visiting TrekkerComic.com. That's Ron Randall's official site dedicated to Mercy St. Clair. It features an archive of great Trekker material so that you can sample the stories, and we're sure that will make anyone a fan of the series. And in addition, there's a new page of Mercy's Adventures every Monday. While you're checking out the latest page, you'll also find links to all of the ways to follow Ron Randall on social media, including Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. TrekkerComic.com also has a link to his Patreon page, where it's easy to donate and help support the brand new Trekker material if you'd like. For a small monthly donation, you get an early look at each week's page, along with a terrific behind-the-scenes look at the development of the page. In this episode, we're covering the remainder of the Chapeltown book, which was the first Trekker collection published through Ron Randall's first Kickstarter campaign. We previously covered the Volstock payoff in episode 34 and Chapeltown in episode 36, and here we're covering the backup stories, Hand of Kindness, and Tricks of the Trade. So it's entirely thanks to Trekker fans that we have this book and other collections that Ron has been able to publish through Kickstarter campaigns. We hope everyone has picked up the book because we don't want to spoil the story for anyone. If you missed out on the Kickstarter, you can still pick up a copy of the book through Ron Randall's Etsy store, and we'll include a link to that in our show notes. And speaking of Kickstarter campaigns, if you're listening to this episode when it is first released then Ron Randall has a new Kickstarter campaign for the upcoming book, Blood in the Wind, in progress right now. So if you want to join in the fun, then just go to trekkerkickstarter.com to get a look at all of the different levels. The rewards from Ron's campaigns are always excellent, besides the gorgeous books that are usually over 100 pages and which often include spot gloss covers. The rewards often include extras like prints, bookmarks, stickers, and even recently some enamel pins, and a wonderful challenge coin. So we encourage you to take a look if you're interested. As always, Ron's social media posts are great fun to keep up with during one of his campaigns. He's been sharing some of the great commission requests he received during earlier campaigns, as well as sharing fun posts featuring glimpses of art from the new book. I do love his posts. For those of you who participated in the previous campaign, Reckoning on Rigel, you should have already received all of your rewards. So if you're missing anything, please contact Ron. He always wants to make sure his supporters have received all of their rewards. And one final thing about Kickstarter campaigns. Ron's friend and studio mate Carl Kiesel has a new Impossible Jones Kickstarter now as well, so you will probably notice the two of them promoting each other's campaigns. The Impossible Jones books from Carl and David Hahn are terrific fun, and we're definitely supporting that campaign as well. If you're interested, check it out at impossiblekickstarter.com. We also want to let everyone know that the nominations for the 2022 Ringo Awards are now open through June 30th. Comic fans get to be part of this process and have a voice in who is nominated. And it's thanks to all of the Trekker fans out there that Ron Randall was nominated for Best Inker for his Chapeltown book. We love seeing Ron get that recognition and seeing Trekker receive extra publicity. We would be delighted if that could happen again. Works published in 2021 are eligible for nomination this year. So that means that Reckoning on Rigel qualifies. And since Ron is the writer, artist, inker, colorist, and letterer, there are lots of categories where he is eligible. So please consider going to RingoAwards.com to nominate your favorites. And we hope that Ron Randall and Trekker will be among your nominations. The winners will be announced at Baltimore Comic Con this fall. We always enjoy hearing from other Trekker fans, and we know the podcast is more fun for everyone when we include your comments. So please take a moment to write in and let us know your thoughts. You could share your Trekker origin story, or just let us know what you like most about the series or the characters. Just listen for our email address and other ways to contact us at the end of this episode. Trekker Talk is part of the Rad Adventures Podcast Network. If you enjoy the show, please consider checking out our other podcasts that are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and YouTube. Warlord Worlds is devoted to the comic creations of writer and artist Mike Grell, including The Warlord, John Sable, Green Arrow, and more. And Xenozoic Xenophiles covers the post-apocalyptic adventure series Xenozoic Tales, featuring Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, by writer and artist Mark Schultz. Ron Randall, Mark Schultz, and Mike Grell are our favorite comic creators. Their stories are always filled with adventure and interesting characters, and their art is excellent. 
We hope you'll try out our other shows, and you'll find links to those podcasts in our show notes. But now, it's time for Trekker, right after this promo for another podcast you might enjoy. You like cheap comic books, right? Well, I'm Professor Allen, and I talk about cheap comic books on the Quarterbin Podcast. In every episode, I'll dissect a single comic from my collection, as long as I paid no more than 25 cents for the issue. Forget about $4 new comics that you can read in four minutes, or crossover events that can cost 100 bucks to collect. Join me in the quarter bin, where even bad comics are a bargain, and good ones are a steal. The Quarter Bin Podcast is part of the Relatively Geeky Podcast Network. Visit us at relativelygeekypodcast.blogspot.com or search Relatively Geeky or Quarter Bin Podcast in iTunes. I guarantee it'll be worth every penny. Hand of Kindness. Story, Art, Colors, and Letters by Ron Randall. Color Assist by Caitlin Like. Collection cover colors by Jeremy Colwell. Editor, Shauna Gore. Our story opens in New Gellif, back on Earth, where two representatives from the Council stop by police headquarters to ask Alex St. Clair about Mercy. He tells them he doesn't know where she is, which they find difficult to believe. Of course, we know Uncle Alex is telling the truth, because Mercy left him a note and intentionally didn't tell him where she was going to make things easier for him. That evening, Alex goes to meet Lasmusi and finds he received a similar note. The two know something big is coming, and that Mercy will likely be at the center of it. Back at Chapel Town, Molly sneaks out of the bedroom, leaving Mercy asleep. On her way out, Molly takes the small golden globe-like orb that Mercy brought back from the desert. She goes to see Sheriff Pell and tells him she wants help getting it unlocked for Mercy. Since this is their first time meeting, Molly immediately realizes he's a jaconite, but it doesn't faze her at all. As she says to Pell, she's a one-woman woman. The two go to meet Bog, who is a contact of Pell's. However, he isn't happy to see them because he still blames Pell for arresting his brother in the past. Bog pulls a gun on them, but Molly quickly jumps between them and explains what they're after, and Bog finally agrees and gives them the name of Di, who might be able to help. Pell has heard that name before, but that means traveling to Razor Past, and it isn't safe. He isn't letting Molly tag along because he knows Mercy will never forgive him if something happens to her. Arriving at Razor Pass, Pell finds himself facing a giant, towering, lizard-like creature with a mouth full of large, sharp teeth. Is it just a coincidence, or is this part of Dai's security system? Either way, Pell has to get past it. Pell fires his gun, but the creature is too fast and smashes into him. As it opens its mouth to end his life, Pell manages to sink a large knife into the soft flesh on the underside of its neck. The creature recoils in agony and tumbles over a cliff, dragging Pell along the way. Just then a reeler shoots past him, and Mercy St. Clair swings into action, grabbing Pell and preventing him from falling to his death. Mercy and Pell make their way through Razor Pass and find Dai's hideout and get the drop on him and his gang. However, things calm down when Dai and his gang realize Pell isn't interested in all of the stolen contraband in their camp, but only in some information. After some negotiations, Dai agrees to unlock the globe device for a generous fee, and Mercy and Pell depart. That evening, Pell joins Mercy and Molly at their home. Now that the globe is unlocked, they have the coordinates for a rendezvous site. But the problem is, they spent all of their remaining credits getting the globe unlocked. However, Pell has good news. Mercy's bounty hunter license has been approved for Chapel Town, and he knows there's plenty of work for her in the area. Plus, Molly found a paying job at a local club, so at least they can start earning the money they need. Hand of Kindness is another great adventure in Chapel Town. It's both a standalone story as well as a continuation of the larger story. I like that the story begins in New Gellif so that we get a chance to revisit Uncle Alex and Laz Moosey. The two of them are so important to the early Trekker adventures, and it's always great to spend a little more time with them. Plus, by dropping them into the story occasionally, Ron Randall keeps the characters in our minds, because I'm sure they will have more involvement with some future stories. I love that at first it seems this will be an adventure with Molly and Pell, 
and it plays that way for a while. But Mercy St. Clair is our hero, and she makes a triumphant return appearance and takes control of the latter part of the story, just like we love to see. And I love the banter between Mercy and Pell in the panels after she saves him from falling over the cliff. I really like the way the scene with Di and his gang is handled very casually. Ron Randall recognizes this scene is not the point of the story, so there's no big confrontation between Mercy and Pell and the gang, which is what you would expect in most similar circumstances. Instead, everything is resolved quickly so that the story can move forward. There's some terrific art in this issue, and one of my favorite panels is at the bottom of page 87, when Molly shows up at Pell's door holding the globe and asking for his help. She looks confident, and she's going to get what she wants, and I love the landscape and skyline in the background behind her. One of my favorite panels is at the top of page 94, as we see Pell approaching Razor Pass on the skimmer bike. It's a great glimpse of the barren, rocky landscape. I love it. And then certainly, page 97 is both the best panel and the best page in the story, as Mercy dramatically swings in with her reeler and rescues Sheriff Pell. Her determined expression and his look of surprise shock are both perfect, and the dramatic skyline in the background is stunning. Then we get the quaint little wrap-up with Pell at home with Mercy and Molly. There are some fun scenes here, as we see Pell's slight discomfort, contrasted with Molly's ease of talking to anyone about anything. And of course, we all now know Pell is a friend because of the complete trust that Scuff puts in him as he sleeps on his lap. And then the story ends at the bottom of page 102 with another of my favorite panels, as we get a lovely distant shot of Mercy and Molly's small home in the desert outside of the city, with a stunning night sky. Tricks of the Trade Story, Art, Colors, and Letters by Ron Randall Color Assist by Caitlin Like Collection Cover Colors by Jeremy Colwell Editor Shauna Gore It's Molly's first gig in Chapel Town, and a beaming and blushing Mercy St. Clair is sitting at one of the tables in front when she is interrupted by a group of five who introduce themselves as newly licensed trekkers. They have a hot tip, but they know it's more than a group of rookies can handle, and they've heard about Mercy's reputation. There's a gang of troublemakers hiding out in the crackbacks, which is the worst part of Chapel Town. There's a bounty worth 25,000 credits from the richest man in Chapel Town. No one trekker could bring them in alone, but maybe a coordinated approach will work, and they're willing to let Mercy take 50% of the total if she'll help. So how can she refuse? Later, as we follow Mercy and the group, we see each of the newly licensed trekkers making rookie mistakes, but thankfully, Mercy St. Clair is there to rescue each in turn. However, they all finally make their way to their positions and wait as their quarry comes into view. The rookies all deploy their nets for successful capture, but it isn't what you might expect. It's a group of cats, rare hybrid cats, but cats nonetheless. It's great the mission was a success, but Mercy can't get over the realization that she was literally herding cats. Chapel Town was Ron Randall's first Kickstarter campaign. It was a big success and the start of a series of new Trekker adventures thanks to crowdfunding. And Tricks of the Trade was the first time that fans had a chance to be featured in one of Ron's stories, and we were lucky to be part of that. The story is short and good fun, and the art is terrific. It's great the way the story fits into the Trekker timeline, but it isn't a necessary story to advance the plot of the main story arc. So it's a great opportunity to tell a small side story and let fans be part of it. The art is excellent as always, but it probably wouldn't be fair to pick our favorite pages or panels because we might be tempted to just pick our own. So we'll avoid that temptation. (laughs) All we can say is that it's thrilling to be included in a Trekker adventure. And if you think that's something you would like too, then just look out for one of Ron Randall's Kickstarter campaigns and look for the pledge level that includes that option. In fact, if you're listening to this episode when it is first released, then there's a Kickstarter campaign going on right now that includes this level as an option if you're interested. In addition to the main story and the two backup stories, the Chapel Town book contains some fun extras and bonus content. There's a commissions gallery which features some great watercolor commissions. 
One features our friends Scott and Tamar Peeler with Mercy St. Clair, and another features our friend Ruth Rice on an adventure in New Gellif with Mercy that was given to her as a gift from her brother and our friend John Baker. There is also a whole section of behind-the-scenes material, including early designs and development sketches. And there are page construction sections where Ron shows a few select pages to go from script to thumbnails to pencils to inks. There's also a section on the development of the cover by Ron and Jeremy Colwell, and it includes the full, completed image without the title or logos, so you can truly appreciate the wonderful art and colors. And to end the book, Ron includes a wonderful collection of black and white ink wash commissions that we've gotten from him over the years. It was so much fun to see those in the book. And with this, we wrap up our coverage of Ron Randall's excellent Chapeltown book. We hope you've all enjoyed our coverage. Next up is Trekker Transmissions, where we share the listener feedback we've received since last time. Your feedback adds so much to the show, so a big thank you to everyone who took the time to write or get in touch through social media. First off, we want to again thank Gene Hendricks for his continued hard work and leadership in the Trekker Audio Adaptation Project. The cast and crew are amazing. We really enjoyed interviewing Amy Riddle, Femi London, and Chris Honeywell, along with Gene in our previous episode of Trekker Talk. The productions are truly a delight to hear. You can find the most recent episodes at Azir Voices, and we encourage you to check them out. It's so much fun to hear the stories come to life. Chris Honeywell's terrific music and sound effects are amazing. He crafts soundscapes that really capture the sci-fi adventure atmosphere. It must be fun to invent the sounds for futuristic weapons and spaceships, and it really brings the show to life. We think you'll enjoy Amy Riddle's and Femi London's performances as Mercy and Molly. They definitely capture the two main characters' personalities well. You may even recognize the names of some fabulous Trekker fans in the credits, including David Akers, Tim Price, Austin Appleby, and Scott Peeler. They're all longtime supporters of Trekker and of Trekker Talk, and have shared a lot of enthusiasm and feedback in our Trekker Transmission segments. On to feedback. As soon as Austin Appleby saw that our previous episode was out, He excitedly wrote to say how much he was looking forward to listening, then followed up to tell us he really enjoyed hearing the interview. He was happy they took time to speak with us, and he appreciated knowing how much care and effort went into the Trekker audio adaptation. Our friend John Baker commented as well, saying, What a delightfully interesting episode and a delightfully interesting Trekker-focused project. Really enjoyable stuff, as usual. I'm really looking forward to listening to the story and trying to figure out how to create an audio file to actually audition for the role of Sheriff Pell, or perhaps Captain Quig. They may never show up in the show, but what the heck, I'll try. John, please do audition. We think you'd do a great job, and would have lots of fun with that, and we'd love to hear you on the show. Writer Gary Cohn happened to notice an image we'd shared on Facebook of Mercy fighting an insect monster from the Rites of Passage, and it caught his eye, and he commented, That's terrific! and reminds me of some moments in the barren earth. That's the excellent comic series created by Gary and Ron. It was initially a backup in The Warlord, and later had its own miniseries. It is truly worth tracking down to read for the great storytelling, art, and adventure. We were fortunate to see Gary recently at GalaxyCon in Richmond. He is always fun to talk to. A lot of people know him as a co-creator of the DC characters Amethyst and Blue Devil. He did great writing on those titles and many others, and is always happy to chat with fans. Next, we want to extend our Trekker thanks to everyone who supported us on social media since the last episode. These are people who liked or shared posts from us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and we sincerely appreciate all of your help. Before we start, let me say if we miss a name, please let us know and we'll correct it on the next episode. And also, forgive us if we mispronounce your name. Just email us and let us know, and we'll correct that next time as well. Ashford of the Ride On Network, Austin Appleby, Brian Ng, Brian Mulvey, Chris at BTO and Bat Books of the Professor Frenzy Show, Clinton Robeson of Coffee and Comics, Cullen Stapleton from the Worst Comics Podcast Ever. Derek W.C. of the Fanholes Podcast and History of Comics on Film. Dr. G. Man of Nerdology of the Pulp to Pixel Podcasts. Ed and Terry Moore of Till Productions. Gene Hendricks from Hammer Strikes and Azir Voices. Jerry Green of the Professor Frenzy Show. Green Lantern HG, a.k.a. Hal Jordan. Helioscope Studio. Jared Albrecht, the Yard Cell Artist. Jeff and Rick Present, Unpacking the Power of Power Pack. Iowa's Joe Crawford. 
John Baker, who does sci-fi TV reviews at 3 If by Space and Beyond the Realm. Katie Artistry of After the Shifting, the Long Box Crusade podcast with Pat, Jared, Jason, and Delvin. Pablo Ventura, the phenomenal Paul Chadwick, creator of the comic Concrete. Paul Hicks of Waiting for Doom and the DC OCD podcast and The Gary Show. Randy Adrews, the sci-fi guy of Soundtrack Alley. Ron and Lynn Randall. Ruth Rice. Sean Ross of Pulp to Pixel and the Secret Wars podcast and the Bat Pod. Talk nerdy to me. Podcrasher Tim Price from the Outcasters. Two True Freaks podcast network. Vic Sage of Pop Culture Retrorama. And Warren Montgomery of Will Lil Comics. Thank you again, everyone. We sincerely appreciate all of your support. Now that you've taken care of Gatefish, that means you can relax, right, Mercy? Relax? How long have you known me, Molly? You know I can't relax. I need to get out there for another bounty. Ooh, another exciting adventure? I'd settle for someone just dropping money in my lap for once. What's wrong? Things look different out here before. Wow. It's almost like we're in a whole new place. So be it. I'm ready for anything. Look for Ron Randall's Trekker Smuggler's Blues in early 2022. Follow Mercy's continuing adventure at azirvoices.com. That's A-E-S-I-R Voices dot com. Before we go, we want to provide our contact information. Please let us know your thoughts through email, Facebook, or Twitter. If you want to contact us directly or have something you would like to have read on the show, then please send an email to trekkertalk at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the name trekkertalk, and you can visit our website for links to all of our social media pages. And that website is... TrackerTalk.com Thank you, Charlotte and Catherine, of the excellent Mark's Mess podcast for that clip. You can listen to our show through Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. And all of our episodes are always available at TrekkerTalk.com and at RadAdventuresNetwork.com. You can also find the show on YouTube as part of the Rad Adventures Network. That's Rad, R-A-D, which is short for Ruth and Darren. On the Rad Adventures YouTube channel, you'll find all of the episodes of all of our podcasts, including Tracker Talk, as well as Xenozoic Xenophiles about the Cadillacs and Dinosaur series Xenozoic Tales by Mark Schultz, and Warlord Worlds about the comic creations of Mike Grell, including the Warlord, John Sable, and Green Arrow. If you like the show, please consider leaving a review. Every review helps the podcast be more likely to show up in search results. And on YouTube, we hope you'll subscribe to the channel and give us some likes on those videos. Remember, at TrekkerComic.com, you'll find a new page of material every Monday, as well as links to all of the ways you can find Ron Randall. Thank you so much for listening, and we really hope you'll come back next time for another new episode of Trekker Talk. Trekker Talk is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. For more information, visit comicspodcast.com. We are not affiliated with Dark Horse Comics or Ron Randall. The views expressed on the show are solely ours. Music is taken from the album Royalty Free Music, Movies, and Videos from the Royalty Free Music Club. We make no money from this podcast and no copyright infringement is intended. (laughs) 